I, I would say, you know, with Poe, he's, he's one of the realest people I've ever met. You know, iron sharpens iron, and he is really, really sharp, man. He's actions first, and his words match up with his action. When he speaks, guys, listen. 18-year-old Poirier would be proud of 31-year-old Poirier right now. Jordan, you were telling me about the reaction that you've gotten from that Kansas City trip. A little more than you expected? A lot more than I expected. Uh, you know, initially just taking the trip, I really didn't want anybody to find out prior to the game that I was driving out there. Um, and, you know, got a win after the game. Somebody had found out about the drive. I wasn't surprised, but uh, there was just the amount of love I got from the mafia, uh, from my fans, family around the world. Um, it was cool, man. Uh, something that I'll definitely look back at, and I wouldn't do it again. Uh, <laughs> but something I'll look back at, and you know, I'm thankful that I got to experience it with my wife, my daughter. Um, you know, but it, it was a lot, very long trip, though. Well, let's go back to the beginning. So, when did the idea first come up that hey, you can't fly, but right, you can take the ride for yeah. 16 hours? Uh, well, I mean, I. I caught the pick in the Baltimore game, cracked two ribs, lung contusion, uh, ne pneumothorax is what they call it, um, and, you know, sat that week. We played Pittsburgh that Sunday. Um, I was out for that game. After the game, I had another MRI that morning. We kind of looked at it later that afternoon after the game, and, you know, they had mentioned to me, they look, Jordan, you know, if you are cleared to play in this game, if you are, at the time I wasn't clear yet, if you are cleared to play in this game, you probably won't be able to fly, and I kind of looked up, like, like what you mean? Like so, I'm gonna. I, it's a possibility I could be clear to play, but I'm not fly. Initially, I was pretty frustrated. I'm not gonna lie. I was frustrated at the whole situation. It's kind of like, like why am I in this situation? Like what the, you know, I've, every kind of everything had happened since training camp. Dislocated my elbow, sprained my foot, mm -hmm. and I had been playing well too. So it's just like, damn, like why is this gotta be happening? So I talked about it for two days with my wife, and we finally just came to the conclusion that hey, you know, we might not ever get an opportunity like this again. Um, the bills are going to provide everything. They're going to provide the, the, the transportation, the hotels, and, and whatnot. So we kind of look, try to look at it more of a positive light. Um, you know, it's a road trip with the family to go play Pat Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, and you know, something that I'll look back at, like I said, and probably laugh about it later on. But I definitely want to do it again. So who came to you with the thought of? of, of uh, yeah, it was our team. It was our team doctors. Um, so our team doctors and. Um, Dr. Body, another specialist that's, that's outside of, of the Bills, you know, they, they kept looking at my images and it was getting better. And, you know, there was a point it finally got to Tuesday and they thought it was you know, I would be OK to play. So and what was your thought when they suggested this? I was like, it didn't make sense to me. You yeah. know, it didn't really make sense. And like I said, I was really frustrated early on. Like, it's like, you know, at this point, like I'm cleared to play but not fly. I kind of didn't really understand it. But, you know, as I started to think about it and contemplate it again even more, you know, the, the outside doctors, even even our doctors, they did a great job of communicating with me, like, the you know, possibility of, of yeah. this happening, that happening, and it was mainly the air pressure. Yeah. They didn't want the air pressure up there and something to happen while I'm up in the air and them not being able to control. So, um, you know, like I said, once we were able to finally, you know, finalize, hey, this is what we're doing, started planning it with Wifey, started planning all of our hotel stops. We stopped in Indy on the way up there yeah. and on the way back. Uh, we left Friday after practice at about 2.30, got to Indy at about 10.30 Friday night. Um, left Indy at, at 9.30, 9, 9.30 on Saturday, and then got to KC at about 4, 4.30 on Saturday afternoon. Yeah. Took the same trip back. So it was uh, it was a lot better with a win. I was, was about to say, because <laughs> flights home are long yeah. after a yeah. loss, I imagine. The drive home would have not been fun. Yeah, it was a yeah. lot better with a win. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, it was, like I said, some, you know, we'll look back, my wife was documenting it all, you know, taking videos and pictures of my daughter just enjoying the ride in the back with her iPad, asking me 50 times, hey, daddy, how many, how much more time we got left? <laughs> Five hours, pumpkin. Hey, daddy, how much more time we got left? Three hours, pumpkin. You better hang on. So, uh, she did not, nah, she's a trooper. Both yeah. her and my wife are, were troopers on the, on the whole trip. So it was awesome, like I said, to experience. When you heard that he was going to take a sprinter van mm. to Kansas City, what did you think? I was like, whoa. I, I was kind of like like him a little bit. Uh, I can't fly, but I can drive. I can I can go uh, through, through uh, that type of transportation rather than flying. I was uh, I took a little bit of pause when they first our, our doctors told me about it, and and then Sean shared with me what the plan was, and uh, they had given that to Jordan and let him t to decide. Mm. And so when he decided he was going to do it, I just took my hat off to him, man, because that shows the, the courage that he has and the commitment that he has to not only uh, the profession, but his teammates as well. Because, I mean, that's not an easy decision. It seems like it might be an easy decision on the outside, but you're talking about your long-term health. And for him to 
drive to the game with 14, 15 hours and go out and play in a National Football League game, an NFL game, and play at the level that he played at, incredible. So I was hanging with the family or whatever. He texted me and said, you know, he had a little problem going on and he might, you know, he wasn't able to fly, but he could drive to Kansas City. The first question was, how long is that? And he said, like, 14, 16 hours, something like that. I just sent back the laughing emojis, like, bro, you're crazy. Like, that's wild, but that's Jay Poe. That's, you know, he's going to do anything for this football team. And um, just the leader that he is, you know, I, I know he didn't even think twice about not playing the game, especially yeah. a big game like it was. So, um, you know, that boy is just uh, willing to do anything for the team. The Jordan Poirier that I know, man, he didn't want to let his teammates down. And he knows that, you know, we're a different team with him on there, you know, from – you know, him being at practice from the little stuff that he says, man, you know, just his energy, man, it's, uh, it's really contagious. And, you know, he, he knew that we needed him, you know, to win that game. And, you know, he drove, you know, 15 hours there and 16 hours back, man. It just shows you the type of dedication that he has, you know, for his craft and for his teammates. It fit his character. Um, it fit who he is, you know, just someone to do whatever it takes for the team. Um, and. Like I said, his actions showed that from, from day one since I got here. Um, so, you know, just hearing that, it was just like, that's Poe right there. Like, that's Poe right there. What did you do to pass the time? Like, how did you spend six, it was 16 hours? Yeah, right? I, watched, I watched a lot of films. So I was able to download the film. So, obviously, you weren't going to have Wi-Fi. So I was able to download my film, um, watch a lot of film. And I did a lot of recovery stuff. They gave me some BFR, um, BFR recovery stuff. I was able to do that on the bus and bands and, and, and speed up. Because you don't want to sit for seven hours straight. That's, mm -hmm. That was the hard part. You know, we took a couple stops. Um, you know, I was trying to stay loose and trying to do the things I can because I knew Plane, flying planes is hard enough going to an away trip, you know, and let alone sitting on a, on a bus for seven hours there, and it was a long, it was a long trip. That's what I was thinking when I saw it. Listen, I know I'm old, though, <laughs> right. and I'm out of shape, but I know, like, how it feels for me in cars and in planes all the time. Right. Like, so you were able to stay loose. As, 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 as much as I could. Okay. Um, you know, there were stretches where I definitely didn't feel as comfortable as I would have hoped, but... Yeah. Um, and like I said, once we kind of got on the road and, you know, got everything situated in the van, we figured out, you know, best places to lay down, best places to kind of chill and get some rest. Um, you know, things were a little bit more smooth. Um, on the way back, it was kind of, this is a story I haven't told you, on the way back, we had to go, the speed limit was 65 on the highway, but we had to go 45 because the winds were blowing too hard. So about for about three and a half, four hours. It took us, um, it took us, I think, normally from seven hours from Indy to uh, Buffalo, it took us nine because we had to drive 45 miles an hour through the high winds. So um, other than that, the trip was smooth, man. We had a good time. But you never do it again? I never do it again. Well, well, I, it just it's just hard, man. I think I think more of it was just mentally preparing. Like you know, it's not a road trip. Like it's not like uh, you're going on a road trip with your family to go up to the mountains and explore. You know, it wasn't one of those. It was like you know, you're on this trip to go play in a big game. Like, right, this is a big right. game. Patrick Mahomes, Carlos Kelsey, like, and I think mentally you get in such a routine throughout the week, throughout the, the you know, in the in, on on trips that you go on 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 away trips. You know, it kind of messes with your routine a little bit and kind of throws you off a little bit. So I think more mentally, um, you know, I, it made me mentally stronger for sure because I had to really hone into what I had to get done, what I needed to accomplish. And, you know, I felt good about the way I played. Um, I feel like I wish I made more plays out there, but it really wasn't a whole lot to, um, you know, I had four tackles, but, it, you know, like I said, it's something that I look back and I'm proud that I was able to handle it the way I did. What do you think it meant to your team for you to be there? You know, I, I don't know, you know, um, I got a lot of appreciation from those guys, um, just being able to, you know, like I said, have the have the mental and physical capacity to do that. Um, I just hope that it showed them that, I, you know, how much I care. I didn't do it for nobody else but those guys, you know, the guys, you know, especially my guys on the back end. Um, you know, I, I love those guys to death, man. And you know, I don't know what's going to happen next year, um, you know, whether I'm here, whether it's, you know, wherever else. But at the same time, like, I'll be able to look back at this and, and know that I, I did everything I could to help help this team uh, win football games. From Micah to Brandon Bean to Leslie Frazier, all of them said the same thing to me, which was that that was so representative of who you are, that you'll do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. like, where did that come from? Where does that approach come from? And I just always feel like I always got something to prove. Um, even, even to this day, my 10th year in the league, the, the numbers that I've been able to do over the last six years here in Buffalo. I still feel, you know, around the league, not as respected as, as I'd like to be. Um, and I still feel like I got a lot to prove. And, and if that's taking a trip to Kansas City to, to show 
you know, how much I care about this team, how much you know, I love this game. You know, I love this game more than anything. And I, I always say you got to treat this game like your girlfriend. You know, you're good to it. It's going to be good back to you. So, um, you know, I love this game with passion. It's given me everything that I, I could ever ask for in life. And so I respect this game. And, you know, once I was able to, in my mind, they told me I was able to play. You know, I had to get my mind right. Look, Jay, you're able to play. Let's go. Let's go get it done. And so um, that's just always, always how I've been, man. I always like to prove people wrong. And uh, it, it's a good feeling to, to – when you know you have proved somebody wrong. And like I said, I, I, there's still a lot left I, I want to prove. Still so much left. There's still a lot of naysayers out there saying this side or whatever about me. And I use that. I literally use, I don't care what it is. I'm about I, to say, <laughs> what, what, what can I say? All pro? Oh, 31 what, what, years old. He's old. You don't got, you know, he's whatever, whatever it is. And so I use that as motivation. Like, okay, I'm 31. Watch. This is what, this is what a 31 year old look like. You know what I mean? Leading the league in picks despite missing <laughs> two games. games. Yeah. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what it is. You already know what it is. I think I was thinking about this the drive to Kansas City or the ride to Kansas. By the way, you must have got pretty close to the driver too. Yeah, we did. Uh, <laughs> what was the driver's no, Joseph. Name? Joseph. Yeah. Shout out to Joseph, man. He was a trooper, man. He, yeah. he was just mobbing the whole he didn't say much, but yeah. um just say, hey, you guys wanna stop? That's about all he asked. You guys wanna stop? We're good. All right, let's go. Um but yeah, he mobbed the whole way, got him a hotel and he mobbed back and uh awesome. he, it, was, it was really cool. It was really cool. But I was thinking about that story and I feel like it's kind of symbolic for you, man. Like you've come such a long way. Yeah. Like you've had such a, a a long journey to get to this point, on and off the field. Right. And and you know, I haven't really thought about it in that sense yet because it's, it, I mean, it just happened about a week yeah. and a half ago. But it's something like, like I look back on it and be like, like I'm proud that I was able to do that. Like win, loss, draw. Like the fact that I was able to. I know people are gonna say, oh, he just rode in the car, like, or oh, he just, he didn't drive himself. Like people are saying, oh, he didn't drive himself. He had to ride in the car. I mean, that's alone, like you're still mentally yeah. preparing yourself to play in a high level, high intensity game um, against one of the better teams in the NFL. And so, um, like I said, to be able to compartmentalize all of that and, and put the game plan together and, 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 you know, like I said, show my teammates that I want to be there and that I, I'm here for y'all. Um, you know, I'm proud, I'm proud of that, proud of my family. Um, and, and like I said, I look back and, you know, write, maybe write a book about it one day. Well, you got, a, you got a hell of a story to tell, a hell of a testimony, and a lot of people are proud of you. The other thing is it's like it's almost, well, next month will be a year mm -hmm. since you penned that Players' Tribune piece mm -hmm. talking about your sobriety and your, and your struggles with alcoholism. And I wonder what do people tell you about that even now? About what that did for them. Yeah, a lot of people. I get a lot of thank you because um, a lot of people don't realize. You know, us as athletes, they see us as, you know, these these all stars that just can't be touched, that just don't got problems. But at the end of the day, like even even us athletes that are you see on Instagram, you see out there on the field, we got real life problems. So I really wanted to, you know, relate my real life problems to everybody else's and let them know, like, hey, you're not alone in this fight with addiction. And that's why it's a huge reason why I came out. Um, is that it's actually March 13th is my sobriety date. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I'm two and a half years sober now. And, you know, the, the people that come and thank me and, and you know, or continue to ask for help, those are the people that motivate me to continue to stay sober and continue to use my voice and my platform that I've built to be able to help those that are in need. Because like I said, people look at us like we ain't got no issues, but once you're able to come out and, and express that, hey, I'm not perfect, you know, I got real life issues too. Um, and you're able to relate to other people that, you know, aren't in our, in our position, um, it helps them. And once I got that gratitude from that, man, the ball just kept rolling. I felt really good about you know, what I was doing, not just on the field, but off the field as well, because, you know, I don't want to be just labeled as a football player, you know, and I feel like my whole life and my whole career, I've kind of been labeled that, and it kind of gave me something to look at, to, to look at off the field, and, yeah. hey, I'm more than a football player, you know, you've built this platform, you've built this voice to be able to help those who, who are in need, and um, so, you know, I'm continuing to speak at schools, at programs, at AA programs, um, and, and just trying to, like I said, use my voice to help those that need it. A couple weeks ago, he shared uh, with the rookies about some of the uh, things he's had to go through and overcome uh, during the course of his career. And I came up to him, because um, I wasn't in that rookie meeting, other people told me some of the things he had to say. I came up to him and I said, Jordan, I just uh, want to encourage you, man, because uh, I know how hard that can be, standing in front of others and just talking about some of the shortcomings that have occurred in your life, in particular dealing with alcoholism. Uh, for you to stand in front of your peers and share your story, that takes a lot of courage. And uh, it means a lot because I know, Michael, that it's going to help other players 
young players who may be thinking or may be going through something similar but are afraid to talk about it. Yeah. I share it with them. I grew up in a home where I had an alcoholic parent, so I know uh, what that means for his wife and his daughter yeah. that he's been able to move away from that part of his life and how much of a challenge it is every single day to stay sober yeah. uh, because of the temptation. And so I just wanted to encourage him and thank him for his willingness, man, to be so open uh, with his teammates because I know that's not easy. Yeah. Uh, so I, 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 I applaud him and appreciate him. What kind of energy uh, does he bring to the meeting room and to the practice field? Well, he's, he's in a lot of ways, he's like a coach in that way. Yeah. Uh, there are times we're being in a meeting and I'm talking to the entire group. And I'll just say, uh, Jordan, why don't you share your thoughts on this opponent? Because I know, like, when I ask that question, it's going to be a, not a whole lot different than what myself or John Butler, our defensive back coach, or uh, Eric Washington, our defensive line uh, coach, would say uh, to the group. Uh, because that's how, how sure I am of the investment that he's put into getting to know that opponent. And so when he speaks, guys listen because they know the time that he's put into his job and, 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 and being prepared. So uh, that part of it, that energy that he believes and that knowledge that he brings uh, really helps our entire defense. Is it a stretch to say you see some of yourself in him as a player? Like, could he have a future? <laughs> like, oh, I, kind I of like I, your career path, maybe? Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt if he decides he wants to go down the coaching path. Yeah. He could be an excellent coach, but in the meantime, <laughs> we want to enjoy him as a player because yeah. he's a really good football player as well. Coach Fraser told me you spoke to the rookies mm -hmm. recently, mm -hmm. and he thanks you for doing that Yeah. because of, because of his experience growing up. What, what was your message to, to them, and how was it received? You know, I, I just told them, look, like, we all got problems, and, and to – I don't – it's hard, it, it's hard enough to be in our situation, to be in our position, um, and it's, hard, it's even harder to have issues and not be able to talk about it. So I just kind of let them know, like, hey, you, I know how hard this is to be as a rookie. You know, you come into a, a system, you come into an organization, they expect so much out of you already. You have all this stuff in play, this, this, this pressure on you. You know, if you ever need someone to talk to, this is, I, you know, I'm, and I was vulnerable with them. I just let them know, like, these are my issues. This is what I was going through. I'm here to, let, I'm here if you need to talk. Ain't no, no BS, no nothing. I'm not gonna judge you because I'm being vulnerable to them. So, you know, I'm, if anybody's to judge somebody, it's them judging me. But no, it wasn't, it wasn't like that. I let them know this is my story. If you guys ever need someone that, that you need to talk to, um, you know, about anything, because you know, we all, we all know somebody that either has alcohol alcohol addiction or, or knows somebody that knows somebody that's got some that's some some issues with alcohol. Yeah. And I think that message is relays like, you know, I had parents growing up, I wish I could have expressed like, hey, you know, I'm going through some shit at the house, like, can you help me? You know what I mean? It's just being able to express that it opens up a lot more doors and it opens up a lot more, you know, you're just vulnerable and you're able to to, to hear a different voice and to hear ways to fight through problems and, and sometimes most of the time some of the people most of these guys are going through the same exact stuff. Yeah. So it's like you know, hey, my dad, my, my my sister, my aunt, you know, I can't get them to stop drinking. You know, how can I help them? Um, how can I help them or ways that I can help them? And, you know, I always trying to guide them in ways that I can, you know, and in my own experience, you know, and in, in my own experience with that is just being able to be honest with somebody, being able to let them know, like, hey, you know, whether it's you or the one that has the issue, let somebody know, like, hey, I got an issue, man. I got real, real shit going on. I can't, I can't stop doing this or the other. Can you help me? You know, I always, my slogan is, it's okay to ask for help. You shouldn't feel ashamed to be able to right. ask somebody, ask somebody close to you or anybody, just, hey, man, I need some help. And, uh, and vice versa, you know, if somebody's got something going on, you know, you just ask them, like, hey, man, if I'm here if you need to talk to me. You know, yeah. just, let, just letting them know, like, if you need to talk to me, man, just, I'm here. Um, just so people, because a lot of times, like, we feel like we're in this battle by ourselves, you know, and it shouldn't feel like that. We need each other. When, when, did, when did you come to that realization? That, that we need uh, that we need each other yeah just that mentality as i was like, as i was going through and i was going through the aa programs and i saw how strong those people in aa they were and i saw that you know they helped me and they didn't have they didn't know me from a grain of anything you know nobody knew i was a ball player nobody knew anything about me 
But I remembered going in there and I remember this lady telling a story about her addiction and how her father was in the hospital that day and how she contemplated coming to the coming come to the program that day. And I always tell the story because this story changed my life. Mm -hmm. And she's telling her story. She's like, I contemplate coming in here. My dad's dying. I hadn't drank in six years. And she's like, I'm so blessed uh, that I came in here today. She's like, I prayed on it. And I and, and God told me to come into AA today. Um, he's like, I had, she's like, I haven't seen anybody new in here in six months. And she's like, to, and she's looking at she's looking at me crying. And I don't know this lady. She don't know me. And she's looking at me crying. And she's like, I'm just so thankful that you're coming in here to get your get the help that you need. And if there's anything that you can do, or if there's anything that I can do to help you, like please, like you know, this is this is so this is more important than anything in the world. And like just that right there, I was yeah. like, damn, dude, like you don't know me, like yeah. you don't know me at all. But you just changed my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just changed, literally just that moment changed my whole life. I wanted to come back and hear more stories after that. I wanted to see like you know these people they got real life issues, and I'm I'm drinking because we lost games, because I'm arguing with my wife, because I'm stressed out at at the house, because things ain't going my way, and I'm not able to handle my alcohol because this side or the other. I'm making all these excuses and all these. You know, these people in here, you know, lost family members, you know, grew up without mom's dad, crack houses, and, you know, that's why they're having their addiction. And it kind of made me realize, like, Dan, Jay, like, like, you blessed, bro. Like, you 20, you 28, 29 years old. You got a beautiful family, beautiful wife, beautiful home. And you just throwing it all away for what? You know, these people got real life issues. And it was at that moment, you know, I was like, okay, let's, let's stop. Let's, let's just, let's make something happen. And I, you know, I stopped drinking for a year. Nobody knew. I would wear my situation. Some of the guys knew on the team. Um, I had went out to Washington. It was during the COVID year. We went out to Washington D.C. one year to to hang out with uh, Josh Norman and our defense went out there. Yeah. It was like that moment. That was the first time I had ever experienced like being in a, in a setting where I had to make a decision of not to drink. You know, because yeah. we had our we did our workouts. Everybody's at Josh's house. You know, pouring out drinks or whatever. And they used to call me DJ Poyo because every time I get lit, I'd be on the DJ booth yeah. like going crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's just I had a whole different dog. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm in there with the boys, like some of the boys still here, Micah, uh, Tredavious, and they're all pulling up shots, whatever. And I'm just like, nah, man. And the guys looking at me like, yo, Po, like, right. what the, like, what you mean? Like, DJ Po, like, drink up, bro. And I'm like, nah, man, like, this is my situation, bro. Like, I, I struggle with alcohol. I just, I can't drink and just chill. So I, I'm stopped drinking. This has been six, it had been four months uh, at that point. And, yeah. But the love that I got from them though, like that changed a lot too. It was like, damn bro, like these boys, they respect you. They appreciate you. And it's like, you know, do it for, if you're not doing it for anybody else, do it for them. Like you already told them, like you done drinking. So now when any other situation comes up, I think about them. I think about the people that, you know, I've, I've affected over the last two years. You know, I think about my family members, obviously. And so it's become a lot, a lot more easier as over the years to, to, you know, handle that addiction problem and, and use that platform, use my voice to be able to help other people. That's powerful, man. Like, describe what every day is like on this sobri sobriety journey for you. What's each day like? And and it's honestly, we always talk about it one day at a time because you can't look back, you can't look forward. Um, and in sobriety, you really have to, you know, some days we're hard, we're harder than others. But you know, it's literally that that one day. How can I get better today <clears throat> on and off the field? You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, we practice every day. How do you get better on the field? Mm -hmm. At the same time, when you wake up, how can you get better off the field too? What are you going to do to get yourself better off the field? So I really took an approach of just better, trying to better myself and be the best version of myself yeah. one day at a time. Because you can't, like I said, looking ahead, looking too far ahead. That's what I used to do. I used to stress my house, stress, stress myself out by just looking way too far ahead. Just like, if this happens, this is going to happen. Or if I don't do this, it's going to do that. And I mean, you start playing all those images in your head and that shit, it, it, focusing on right now. Like, yeah. what do I got to do right now to better myself, whether that's on the field, off the field, you know, and, and, and different. And if you do that one one day at a time, turns into a week, turns into six months, turns, turns into, into two a year, and a half turns years. into two and a half years. <laughs> so that's really just been my approach, man. Yeah, man. You mentioned him sharing his story mm -hmm. of his struggles. What did you think of that? I was amazing. I, I, I Right away, I texted him. I said, you know, because I think that we could all kind of see it. Um, but I feel like when he came out and he, you know, obviously they said the first step is ad admitting it, is, yeah. is realizing your, your issues, and realizing your problems. Um, for him to do that and him to come out to the world, that's not easy to do. That's, that's you know, it's a vulnerable thing to do. Yeah. Um, so for him, and, and I think in the day and age that we live in, social media, you know, there's, there's always going to be people, people that attack that and use that against him. Yeah. Um, but I'm, you know, as, as his brother, as his teammate, um, 
you know, it just meant the world to me. So I texted him right away and said, man, I love you, man. I, that, that's so dope that you just came out and, and, you know, told the whole world. And I think it was good for him. Um, he became a better person. And, and anybody else that saw that that's dealing with the same issues yeah. um, saw that and, sit, and basically said to themselves, like, wow, like, that's, that's cool he did that. And what kind of transformation have you seen? You say he's been a better person mm-hmm. since he sought help. Um, yeah, I just think that he's uh, a more fo- focused person. Um, I just think that he's he's a better father because of a better a better husband, a better football player. Um, I think life has kind of come full circle for him, and he's kind of realized that he was a very talented football player um, before, you know, when he was dealing with all that. But now you put all that stuff to the side, and it, he's just been able to blossom more. And I think that that's where, you know, him being in this building um, since 2017. And, and seeing his progress kind of went hand in hand with you know how the Buffalo Bills have, have been going, he's just yeah. could continue to get better. And um, obviously, the sky's the limit for our team and for for, for Poe. I mean, you're so comfortable talking about your struggle, talking about your journey. We've talked about what it does for others. What's it do for you to give voice to it this way? It, I mean, it's it really, like I said earlier, it kind of gave me a different identity. It kind of gave me something that I'm not just looked at as as an NFL player or as just as an athlete. It gives me a, a new identity as somebody who people look, can look up to, not just as an athlete, but as somebody who struggled with addiction. <clears throat> somebody who, you know, hey, I can relate to Jordan Poirier because, look, I'm, I was going through the same thing. And, you know, people to this day still write me on Instagram like, hey, man, I'm a year sober. Your story helped me out a lot. I can't, you know, I can't thank you enough. And little stuff like that, man. And, you know, it's like, dang, dude, oh, that's awesome. You should be proud of yourself one day at a time. You know, I don't, it's the same. It, yeah. you know, it's, the, it's, it's awesome to see that, you know, and it's awesome to feel that. And so um, it's really just giving me another, you know, another way a version of myself I guess that I'm I can work on I can continue to be extremely proud of um, because football is one thing it's only gonna last for so long but you know when football is done I definitely ain't gonna be no coach so uh, (laughs) really okay well let's let's settle that because I was talking to Leslie he probably think I he probably think I could probably be a coach totally because he said sometimes (laughs) in meetings he'll ask you well what do you see here and he knows that you're gonna say what they would say yeah but no (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to hold off on that right Life now. coach, maybe. Life coach. Great. Life. Yeah, yeah, of course. 100%. Life yeah, coach. Definitely, I want to keep going around uh, keep going around the country. And like I said, I built built up a nice little – I went to Lake Oswego – or uh, I say Lake Oswego. Oswego College. Um, it's uh, – I don't know where it's at. It's towards Syracuse. Mm-hmm. Went over there, spoke. I'm going to UB and speaking in a couple months. Yeah. Um, uh, Camp Good Days, I spoke out here. And, you lead it all the way into it. Yeah, I have to. I have to. I feel like it's a, it's a way for me to grow, um, and it's a way for me to continue to build that, you know, that off the field, those relationships off the field that I think that it's important. Man, like, the person you are now, you mentioned that you had this persona. DJ, was it DJ, DJ Poe? DJ Poyo. DJ yeah. Poyo. It's like, but the Jordan Poyo that stands here now, like, what do you think of this person? You know, um, my wife knows this. She she hates talking about me and just like, like I hate talking about myself too. Yeah. It's just kind of like weird. You know, she's always like talking to me. Hey, Jordan, I'm so proud of you. Like the things that you've accomplished. I'm just like, baby, like stop. Like I don't <laughs> like just I got I gotta watch film. I got a game on Sunday. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's hard to like sit back and kind of you know during the bye week I did kind of take a bit take a step back and like damn Jay like. <laughs> you got four picks in three games. <laughs> like, you missed two games already. Like, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. You know, you dislocated your elbow, you got your foot. You know, you're starting to get back healthy again. And you, know, you just drove to Kansas City. It's just kind of like a lot. Like, holy shit, bro. Like, you got 11 games left. Like, dang, like, what else can we do? Like, how far can we go? So you kind of sit back and like, yeah, I'm, I'm damn proud of myself. But at the same time, I know... I know the sky's the limit for me. I can yeah. continue to grow. I can continue to be a better football player. I can continue to be a better person off the field. Wife, husband, or I'm sorry, wife, husband, <laughs> husband, uh, father. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? And so there's a lot There's a lot of room to grow, and, but just continue to be that best version of myself one day at a time. And I know, like I said, that one day at a time, gonna, I'll look back in three years, and that one day at a time will be three years, and I'll be like, dang, man, you took one day at a time. This is where you're at now. And so one day at a time got me here talking to you right now. And I'm extremely best to be, blessed to be in this situation. I have this opportunity. You know, 18-year-old me probably would have never thought Jordan Poyer would have be standing here in this situation talking like this. But 18-year-old Poyer would be proud of 31-year-old Poyer right now. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much yeah, for sharing, yeah. man. Thank, Thank you. you. Much. Appreciate Probably. it, bro. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. that. All right. Yes, sir.
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.